Hi, I'm Gabby from the RBA. This is the third video in our series on the Australian dollar exchange rate. In the previous videos, we talked about how the exchange rate is measured and why it matters for the Australian economy. In this video, I will talk about what makes the Australian dollar exchange rate move. The Australian dollar is a floating exchange rate. This means that its value is determined by changes in the supply of and demand for Australian dollars in foreign exchange markets. See our explainer on exchange rates and their measurement for more on different exchange rate regimes, floating, fixed and managed. In this video, we will look at some factors that affect the supply of and demand for Australian dollars. Some of these have longer term effects on the value of the Australian dollar. Other factors influence the value of the Australian dollar over shorter periods of time. First, let's talk about how changes in the supply and demand of Australian dollars can cause the exchange rate to move. Australian dollars are sold and bought, or supplied and demanded, in the foreign exchange market. On the x-axis is the quantity of Australian dollars traded, called turnover. On the y-axis is the exchange rate between the Australian dollar and another currency, such as the US dollar. Supply is made up of anyone wanting to sell Australian dollars for a foreign currency. This could be Australians buying imported goods and services, Australian investors making investments overseas, or foreigners selling Australian dollar investments. The supply line slopes up because owners of Australian dollars are more willing to sell at an exchange rate when they will receive a larger amount of foreign currency in return. Demand is made up of owners of foreign currency who want to buy Australian dollars. This could be foreigners buying Australian exports or foreign investors making Australian dollar investments. The demand line slopes down because owners of foreign currency are less willing to purchase Australian dollars at an exchange rate when it will cost them more of their foreign currency. The Australian dollar will appreciate if demand for Australian dollar increases, supply decreases, or both. This means the Australian dollar is more valuable relative to before, that is, more US dollars are needed to buy one Australian dollar. It is the opposite for a depreciation. Keep in mind that the drivers of the Australian dollar do not occur in isolation. A whole range of things could be happening at the same time, and this can push the exchange rate in different directions. As a result, when we talk about factors that affect the supply of and demand for Australian dollars, we often talk about how they lead to a higher or lower exchange rate than otherwise. First, let's talk about Australia's interest rate differential. The interest rate differential measures the difference between interest rates in Australia and those in other advanced economies, such as the US, Euro area, and Japan. If Australia's interest rate differential changes, say it decreases, this could mean interest rates have decreased in Australia, increased in other economies, or some combination of these. A decrease in Australia's interest rate differential would typically lead to a depreciation of the Australian dollar if this was the only factor that changed and everything else stayed the same. This is because Australian dollar assets that pay interest, such as government bonds, become less attractive for investors to hold since they receive a lower interest rate than before, compared with international assets. In response, investors will wish to hold less Australian dollar assets. Less money, or what we call capital, flows in and more money flows out of Australian dollar investments. Demand for Australian dollars will decrease and supply will increase, contributing to a lower value for the Australian dollar than otherwise. For more information on assets and government bonds, see our videos on bonds and the yield curve and short and longer term interest rates. The interest rate differential is a really important aspect for the transmission of monetary policy to the exchange rate and to the Australian economy. When the RBA eases monetary policy, say by reducing the target for the cash rate, all else equal, this reduces Australia's interest rate differential and contributes to the exchange rate being lower than otherwise. This is one channel for monetary policy to affect economic activity, employment and inflation to help the RBA meet its objectives. See our videos on exchange rates and the economy and on monetary policy transmission for more information. So how do we measure Australia's interest rate differential? This chart shows the Australian dollar exchange rate against the US dollar on the left and the interest rate differential in purple on the right. The interest rate differential is typically measured as the difference between a government bond yield in Australia and an average of government bond yields in the US, Germany and Japan. 
Here, we are looking at the difference in three-year government bond yields. The exchange rate tends to move closely with the interest rate differential over time. For instance, a decline in the interest rate differential often occurs at the same time as a depreciation in the Australian dollar. However, the series don't always move together because, as I mentioned earlier, multiple factors can affect the Australian dollar at the same time. We will turn to these now. Let's now look at, the, at commodity prices and the terms of trade. The terms of trade is the ratio between export prices and import prices. Commodity prices have a large influence on the terms of trade, which in turn affects the value of the Australian dollar. This is because resource commodity exports make up around 60% of Australia's total exports and include goods such as iron ore, natural gas, gold and coal. Therefore, movements in commodity prices tend to result in movements in export prices. An increase in the price of iron ore typically leads to higher commodity export prices and an increase in the terms of trade. In addition, when commodity prices increase, commodity exporters may decide to invest in expanding their production capacity and take advantage of the higher prices. This investment has typically been paid for from money flowing into Australia from overseas. In response, demand for Australian dollars may increase, leading to an appreciation of the exchange rate. Because of these relationships, the Australian dollar is often referred to as a commodity currency. This chart shows Australia's terms of trade in grey on the right and the Australian dollar against the US dollar in red on the left. You can see that the Australian dollar has tended to move quite closely with the terms of trade over a long period of time. One period in Australia's history where the relationship is quite noticeable was during the mining investment boom. This period saw a very large increase in commodity prices, including iron ore, from the mid-2000s through to 2013. Foreign investment into Australia increased to help increase the production capacity of Australia's resource sector. In response, demand for Australian dollars increased and the Australian dollar appreciated to a record high of $1.10 against the US dollar in 2011. We have a whole explainer on this topic that you can check out for further information. The final long-term driver of the exchange rate that we'll look at is international trade. This includes international trade in commodities, but also other goods and services that Australia trades with the rest of the world. When Australian dollars are bought and sold to facilitate international trade, this affects the supply and demand of Australian dollars and the exchange rate. For example, when Australians export goods or services, Overseas buyers must purchase Australian dollars to pay the exporter. More exports increases demand for Australian dollars and leads the Australian dollar to appreciate. On the other hand, when Australians import or buy goods and services from overseas, the importer must sell Australian dollars for foreign currency to pay the overseas seller. More demand for imports increases the supply of Australian dollars and the Australian dollar depreciates. So that covers the longer term drivers of the Australian dollar. The value of the Australian dollar is also influenced by other factors over shorter periods of time or on a day to day basis. For example, the Australian dollar often tracks movements in other financial markets because of changes in what we call risk sentiment. Risk sentiment refers to how much risk investors in financial markets are willing to take on in their investments. And this changes all the time as new information becomes available. If investors feel that economic growth in the future could be higher than they previously thought, they might be prepared to take on more risk in their investments. Prices in a range of financial markets, such as share markets, typically increase as investors respond to positive news about future economic growth or improvements in risk sentiment. Over different periods of time, we've also observed that the Australian dollar appreciates when risk sentiment improves. This doesn't mean that changes in global share markets cause changes in the exchange rate or vice versa. Rather, it probably means that investors in both markets are responding to a similar thing, changes in risk sentiment. Let's look at some data to see this in action. This chart shows the Australian dollar exchange rate against the US dollar in red on the right axis and a measure of US share prices in black on the left axis. You can see that over the past 18 months or so, the Australian dollar and US share prices have moved together quite closely. This suggests that over recent times at least, changes in risk sentiment appear to have had an important influence on the exchange rate. Before we finish, a word on foreign exchange intervention, because it's something the education team receives many inquiries about. 
Although the RBA can still intervene in the foreign exchange market in certain circumstances, intervention has become infrequent and more targeted. For example, the RBA has only intervened once in the past 20 or so years, during the global financial crisis in 2008 and 9. If you want to learn more about foreign exchange intervention, you can find information in our explainer on drivers of the Australian dollar exchange rate. So that's all for this video and for our series on exchange rates. All the resources I mentioned are linked in the description. See you next time.